Hello YouTube, 87 Ricer here. So, as you all know, this is my 87 Camaro Project Beater B. Beater B. Because it will be yellow with black racing stripes by next year. Um, the things that needed to be fixed are fixed. Seen it in the previous videos. That was busted out, and it's fixed. The headlights were a little wonk, but we took a bracket, and we, uh, the bracket straightened them up and keeps them solid. This was not broken, but this one was. And this is off of a different car along with the side markers the side signals here they came off of a different vehicle that came off of a off of a dodge vehicle but they look pretty identical and then the side markers came off the ford pinto and uh you can see the rivet to keep them in place so uh yeah, this is Beater B. Um, 1987 V6 2.8. I'm not going to be driving this car around all the time. It is a, it's mostly just for an occasional cruise or car show. And I do plan on taking this car, this transformer, to like Lake of the Ozarks for the Magic Dragon or the Winsville Cruise Night, or just any car show that I hear about, I'd like to take it and show it off. It's really what I got it for. Um, well, I mean, I had the money to get it and I got it. So underneath the hood, you all seen in one of the previous videos, it is yellow. Um, so the idea for the yellow is John Deere yellow. Cheap yellow, you can get you can get John Deere yellow cheap, and that would be the way to go. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to do John Deere yellow on it. Um, as far as the Camaro badges, one, this side fell off, but it's okay. I'm not ticked, nothing. I'm probably going to keep the Camaro badges off of it, and I'll probably just go ahead and uh, replace those with the Autobot logo on both fenders and make it an authentic Autobot. That's the idea. And I was in the, I went down a gravel road today, so it kicked up some uh, some dirt and mud, which <laughs> I should take it to the car wash and wash it, because my dad literally washed it for like, uh, whenever he picked it up for me, because it was caked with, uh, with leaves and stuff that had fallen over on it over the time that it had been sitting. So, but yeah, the car runs, it drives, it's legal. Historic plates on it, so how you go about that is if you if you haven't put the title in your name already, if you're getting ready to put historic plates on it and you don't have the title in your name yet, you need your title, you need proof of insurance, and you need your property taxes. But they do a lot of the property tax check online if you don't have your paper form. So uh, as long as you got title, if you haven't put it in your name but you're going to <clears throat> your property taxes and proof of insurance three you don't have to get inspected as long as you're going for historic plates but you got to keep it under i know on my motorcycle they said keep it on my harley sports or uh, on my harley soft tail on the 87 on the 87 soft tail they said i have to keep it under a thousand miles unless it's for car shows then you know you, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so I'm going to go by that. I I believe you can only do two 2,000 miles a year. That's what I believe. I think the bikes are just different because you, they know you can go farther than these than these cars. You can always go farther on a bike. Gas savers. But <sighs> Beater B does not use gas. He drinks gas. That's his liquid beverage. But... I have to get home and make 
a spot for Beater B to sit because I'm gonna have him on dispatching, dispatcher uh, mode. So he's gonna be sitting at home, pretty in dispatch mode, watching out for uh, crime going on around the area and you know, watching out like Autobots do, looking for them to set the cons, keeping them scan out. That's what I gotta do. I gotta go make a spot so he can sit there and dispatch because the only time he's gonna be active is when I have a reason to take him to the car shows. So and right now it's not the prettiest and I'm okay with it, but it will be yellow with black racing stripes. Uh maybe not even a racing stripes, maybe just one single solid stripe from this point all the way to the top around and back down this line maybe this whole thing in this area uh matte black on on the uh uh john deere yellow now i'm not going to clear coat the car i like those satin finishes I, I'm not a clear coat. I'm not a, I'm not a clear coat glossy guy. I like the satin stuff. So, that's what's going on. I can drive B when I, I go to car shows. I have something car showable now. When the car season's available or when it starts, I can take it to car shows. Um, but like I said, dents in the car, all fine by me. Not a sweat. In fact, when it gets painted, when it gets painted yellow, you're still going to see those divots and stuff because I'm not going to replace the fender. I'm okay with the fender that's on it. It doesn't bother me. I'm not going for a pristine look. It's going to show its battle scars. It's been through some shit. But it's definitely not going to stay blue. And I actually do like the... Uh, I like the Pontiac wheels. They they really are nice. Uh, the last time I had a, the last time I had a uh, an '80s Camaro, I had an '85 T-top Camaro, and it had the same 2.8 liter V6. But I had the American Racing wheels on it, and I I actually bought it for 500 bucks back in the day. I traded a a gas powered RC truck those really fast little trucks i paid like 300 bucks for that truck i had that 300 bucks wrapped up in a little rc truck that ran off nitro and uh <clears throat> and then i gave 200 bucks cash so i ended up getting an 85 t-top for 500 bucks cash or 200 bucks cash in a little rc truck but then i had already had a 94 camaro a maroon one and it needed to be worked on and I needed the money to fix it. And I didn't have the money to fix it. So I sold the T-Top Camaro for 700 bucks. Right at, not long after I got it. And that $700 went into fixing the 94 Camaro. And I had a 94 Camaro first. Before I picked up the, before I picked up the 85 Camaro. And uh, later on in life, got another job. Our first child was here, and uh, we picked up a 2001 V6 automatic Camaro T-top. It was the green with, it was the blue with a green tint as you walked around it, or green with the blue tint as you walked around it. Either or, but it was those two colors. <clears throat> and all of my Camaros have been V6s. Now, I told myself I wasn't going to do a V6 muscle car unless it was a V8. I, I told myself I wasn't going to do another muscle car unless it was a V8. But I'm tired of holding myself, myself back when I can enjoy an 87 regardless. Yeah, what, do I want it to be a V8? It would be badass if it was a V8. But I'm content with it being a V6 because I know... I know for a fact that as long as this car stays running and driving and I take care of it, it's worth more later than it is now. As long as it's running and driving and people see it, it's always going to be worth more. 
because they're getting very rare. They're getting rare and rare and rare. Even though they're everywhere, they're getting more scarce on the roads. Most of them have been souped up and turned into badass drag cars. Hagedorn collision repair. <laughs> and they, like, they're flat out fast. And, but this one, it's just a regular driver, V6. Good little car. I'm happy with it. Uh, as you all know, I was born in 87. I've mentioned it few times in my videos so 87 tricks my trigger but i got an 87 soft tail and now i got an 87 camaro and neither one of those two vehicles are gonna ever leave me as long as i got breath in my lungs and i'm alive and kicking this is staying with me long term somebody would have to give me stupid money and i'm talking stupid money to get this off my hands and that's really it it's not leaving and I plan on taking my kids for a ride in it so they have memories of riding in a cool car like this. When they get a little older, they can look back on it. Just like they do with uh, riding on the motorcycles. They remember that. Making memories. Enjoying while I have it. And uh, that's really about it. So I just got personal with you. Uh, but like I said, I'm just kind of cruising it right now because it's been sitting for a while. But we got it up. It's been... We, it's finally gotten up and running this week. We pay, I paid for it Sunday. It's been worked on throughout the week. And then today I picked up a battery and an alternator. Fires up, charges battery. She runs. She doesn't overheat. Or he doesn't overheat. Good thing. But that's really about it. I know I'm doing a little nighttime walk around of it but ain't nobody else around just me in the Herman Riverfront Beater B and I call it Beater B because um, in the very first the first live action Transformers the Michael Bay version the first one when Sam first picks up the Camaro it was a B they consider that car the Beater B the Beater B that was, his, that was Sam's first car. So, because it wasn't perfect when we first met it. And now the movies that they got now of Transformers, Bumblebee started off as a Jeep. You all seen that. You know it. Then he went, transformed into a Volkswagen Beetle. You all know that. And then, at the end of it, he turns into that pristine beater b because if you think about it the movie was based in 87 and the based in the year 87 and uh that car then that beater b then was a pretty pristine car still at the time it wasn't that old so it wasn't that beat up it was still a pretty nice looking car and then by the time sam got him by the time sam witwicky sam witwicky bought him he had already been through some shit he had some battle scars just like this car right now it's had some battle scars just like that so i'm gonna end it here thank you all for listening to me jibber jabbering and uh if you like my videos hit the like button if you want to subscribe to my channel hit that subscribe button and uh if you want to be notified about all my ridiculous videos hit that bell notification and it should notify you when i upload videos onto YouTube. 87 Ricer out. Peace.